Barcelona don't win every match, even ones that are not against Real Madrid. The team at the bottom of the English Premier League sometimes beat the league leaders. A couple of years ago, Leicester City won the Premier League with a team that had only just escaped relegation the year before. How? The answer is, as we know, that soccer is a team game, and the team is stronger than 11 individuals. Therefore, player combinations can add significantly to a team's success. We can use soccer analytics to identify the best player combinations from the talent at our disposal. Which data matters? This is very important. Data is of little use if it just describes what has happened. It only becomes useful when it identifies the causes of decisive actions on the pitch. As old school pundits are keen on telling us, there is only one statistic that matters. Goals scored against goals conceded. In some ways, they're right. In others, their view is too simplistic. We need to go back to see what leads to those goals, and the answer is usually team play. Similarly, if we look at what prevents those chances from happening, it's usually team play. Certainly there are occasions when a player will pick up the ball from the halfway line, beat three players and bury the ball in the bottom corner, or will hit a 30-yard volley into the roof of the net direct from a headed clearance. On rare occasions, a goalkeeper will make a simple, unbelievable reaction save. But mostly, it's about teamwork. It is passes and dribbles that lead to the goal-scoring opportunities. It is solid defending and covering that stops those chances from occurring. This means that getting the combination of players right is very important. We need to look at passing accuracy, dribbling skills and how runs off the ball support these. We need to look at players who pass to each other regularly, reading each other's plans. Defensively, we need to look again at pairs and blocks of players that cover well for each other. A part of that will be communication. We should analyse the spaces between midfielders, midfielders and defenders, and between defenders themselves. These are the factors which will lead to goal-scoring opportunities and conversely stop them from occurring. How to judge player combinations There is some theory involved here, and also use of the data gathered from teammates playing together, both in practice and in matches. The theory element requires us to consider the best distances between players for optimal defensive capability and, when attacking, the best positions to get into to make a decisive pass that creates a goal-scoring opportunity. Mesut Otso has topped the number of chance-creating passes for most of the last six or seven seasons across all of Europe's top leagues. It's not, therefore, surprising that he's just secured a pay structure breaking pay rise from his current club, Arsenal. From analysing the data we collect from different groups of players working together, we can assess, statistically at least, the best combinations for our team. However, there is also a psychological factor in choosing player combinations. A team doesn't have to be made up of best mates, but there does need to be trust between teammates. A part of that comes from quality. We're more likely to pass to a player who's going to do something with that pass. Another element comes from work rate. We're going to be more comfortable sharing defensive midfield with a partner who works hard to cover runs, make tackles, shepherds and harasses than one who leaves the bulk of the work to ourselves, however good they are on the ball. And finally, there is the undefinable element, the way that certain players naturally understand what their partners will do. That skill improves with playing together and from training together. The message to the coach here is that once partnerships are established, it's a good idea to stick with them. The use of substitutions to change a game. We can employ substitutes to replace tired and injured players or to make a tactical change to protect a lead or recover a deficit. There's been a good deal of research into this area and we now know the times to make statistically the most impact. Bearing in mind that there is a less than even chance that the game will change as the result of a substitution, if it is going to, then statistics suggest the first one cannot be later than the 58th minute. The second needs to follow by the 73rd minute mark. It can be earlier, but not later. Then the final substitution happens in the 79th minute or before. 